When talking about up and coming areas in the Charleston area, West Ashley usually isn't the place that comes to mind. However, out here off of Bees Ferry is one of the newest up and coming areas that we're seeing a lot of development, including a 3000 acre planned development in the future. So let's go. Welcome back. If you're new here, I am Bill, your favorite YouTubing Charleston realtor. And we are out here in West Ashley off of Beast Ferry to talk about the crazy amount of development that's going on out here. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Bees Ferry, it's the road that goes from Savannah Highway or Highway 17, four and a half miles to Ashley River Road. Now, back in the day, this was kind of where you would move to if you still wanted to be close to Charleston, but you wanted to be away from the hustle and the bustle. And it's not like that anymore. I mean, it started being developed back like in the 60s with the Springfield and the Drayton neighborhoods. And then that moved on into Shadow Moss, which if you're familiar is a big neighborhood around a golf course that was built in the 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s. And then you had Village Green come in and then Grand Oaks Plantation is another big master plan community. And since then, a lot has happened out here. Now, over the past 10 years, we've seen the shopping center with Harris Teeter and a bunch of other stores go in right at the entrance of Grand Oaks. And that kind of started the revitalization of this area or the growth of this area. I mean, in just four miles of Bees Ferry, you have a Publix, Harris Teeter, a Walmart, and now a Lowe's Foods that they just converted over from a Bilo. There's a lot going on out here. So let's talk about some of these projects. So let's start by talking about some of the smaller projects that are happening now or just happened before we get into that 3000 square foot project that you don't want to miss. Now, first, where we are. So this is the entrance to the Hunt Club neighborhood right at the end of Main Road and Bees Ferry. Now, this was just put in here where there are talks of a kicking chicken. They've got a pediatric dentist in. There's going to be, I believe, a vet. There's talks of a Dunkin' Donuts and a Mexican restaurant and just a lot of stuff happening here. And even across the street, that is for sale. And they're in talks of developing that too. And that's just offering more to the residents that are out here. And speaking of residents, there's more residents coming as well. So Toll Brothers is building a neighborhood just down the street called Verdier Point. And they're going to be attached homes that start in the mid 400s. They've got six different floor plans. And there's even a huge neighborhood called Bell Rose at Bees Ferry that is all townhomes that are being built to rent along with a massive apartment complex. So there is a lot of growth in this area in the residential and the commercial. When we go up further, you get to Glen McConnell. There is the West Ashley Circle where Walmart is and that Harris Teeter. The other two quadrants are in the process of being developed with talks of car wash and another Chick-fil-A and a bunch of other businesses going in there. And it is zoned as an urban center. So if you're looking for that next up and coming area to move to, this is where you want to be because I think things are just going to get bigger. But now let's get into the reason why you're probably here. And that is for an update or to learn about Long Savannah. Now, Long Savannah is this 3,000 acre project that is going to take place from behind Shadow Moss and Village Green all the way down here to behind Hunt Club. Now, of this, only 1,200 acres are going to be developed, which leaves 1,800 acres into a conservatory that cannot be touched. So don't think that it's going to be a 3,000 acre neighborhood. It's only going to be 1,200 acres, which is still extremely large. Now of that, they're going to separate it into 10 different neighborhoods. Right now, the plan is nine are going to be residential and one is going to be an urban center. So far, two builders have signed on with Mungo and Pulte, and they've both said that they're gonna build around five to 600 homes each. We'll get into what I think is gonna happen with that in a minute. So let's talk real quick about what this is gonna do to this whole area and how it's gonna change. Because one of the biggest things that people that live here have complained is what's gonna to happen to the traffic? 
How are people going to get in and out? What's going to, where's everyone going to go? Well, Beast Ferry is already a wide road, two lanes each way, four lanes. But then they just finished expanding Glen McConnell to get more traffic out here to help what's currently here. Well, that's where the entrance to Long Savannah is going to be. They're going to take Glen McConnell and go across Bees Ferry and continue that into the neighborhood, which is where that urban center will be. And then the neighborhoods are going to spread out from there. So they are going to move people kind of behind where things are, but therein lies something else. Because you see right next to where we are currently is the West Ashley landfill. So if the wind is blowing just right, there is a chance that you're going to smell that landfill in this giant neighborhood. I don't know if I'd feel very comfortable with that, but they haven't said pricing because would you pay a cheaper price to smell a landfill? Probably not. But the most recent homes that just sold in here were by Ashton Woods and they sold anywhere from 400s to 600s. So in my opinion, that's about where they're gonna be, probably further five to 700s once they get that neighborhood going. So the project has been in the works for about 20 years and it's just now moving forward because there has been a lot of opposition, but we don't really know too, too many details out for that. So let's speculate a little bit. And here's what I personally would love to see happen with that area. Now, starting with the residential side, I would love to see them do something kind of along the lines of Midtown Nexton, where instead of giving Pulte this area and Mungo Homes this area and DR Horton this area, I would love to see them just get lots interdispersed between each other to get more variety of homes so that it doesn't look quite as cookie cutter. And I'd also like to see them get some higher end builders in there, specifically like Homes by Dickerson or even New Leaf Homes, if you guys are watching this, like to get in there, get some of those higher end homes. Yeah, it's gonna push some of the prices up higher, but it's also gonna give more variety to the area. And it's gonna make it a more desirable place to live because it's going to be aesthetically pleasing. And then for that urban center, I would love to see them focus on local restaurants and bars and stores and make it extremely walkable so that the people that live there want to spend time there and don't have to leave if they want good food or something to do. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Is this a good idea? Is it a bad idea? What do you think they should do with the housing in the urban center? Like, I wanna know your input. Let's see what comes to light as they start building this. And as always, if you're looking to make a move in the next three days to three years, I'm Bill Olson and I would love to be your realtor of choice. Have a great day and I'll see you on this video right here.